everyone, it's Elliot here, and today I'm bringing you a very special video that I've been super excited for. It's a collaboration with two of my other YouTube buddies, and we're basically all doing top five lists on a chosen topic of ours. My friend Leif from his channel I Watched is doing one on his top five films set in the mind, which sounds super interesting. And my friend Noah is doing one on his top five mystery films. And of course, I'm doing one on the top five films about the life of painters. Now, you're no doubt asking yourself, why the hell am I doing a list about the top five films about painters? It just sounds incredibly boring, right? Well, you're probably saying, oh, it's because Elliot's pretentious and he wants to come across as edgy and he just wants to show off how film literate he is. Well, yeah, admittedly, all of that is true. But no, it actually came to me the other night when I was listening to some music. Curiously, I was actually listening to Don McLean's album, American Pie, and the song Vincent came on, which is a melancholic but beautiful song about the life of Vincent van Gogh. And it just got me inspired, so I went immediately to my Blu-ray collection in the back here, and I picked out the film Van Gogh by Maurice Pilar. After watching that film, I knew then that I wanted to do this video on films about painters, and spoilers, Van Gogh by Maurice Pilar is in this list, but I won't tell you in which position yet. Now you're probably thinking, are there even five films about painters? Because that just seems like an incredibly niche subject. Well, you'd be surprised actually, because cinema as an art form is over 100 years old, and even the tiniest niches of subjects have gotten attention on the big screen. And none of the films in this list are a stretch at all. They are actually all very good films in their own right, and I advise everyone to go and see them. Okay, I'm starting to ramble on now, aren't I? So let's just crack on with the list. Actually, no, sorry. <laughs> Before we do, I have one honourable mention that I have to give that absolutely would have been in this list had it been a top six films about the life of painters. This extra film I'm talking about is called Shalkin the Painter, and this is a TV movie that was shown on the BBC around the time of Christmas 1979, and for ages and ages it had been lost to obscurity before the British Film Institute restored it and have recently released it on Blu-ray and DVD, and everyone can now go and watch it. It's a slow, methodical and lethargic gothic horror film that chronicles the life of Shalkin the Painter as he falls in love with the daughter of his mentor, who is to be married off to a ghoulish suitor who just seems otherworldly. It's a film about jealousy, art and apathy in the framework of this chilling horror atmosphere. The cinematography is impeccable for a TV movie and it evokes the art movements of the time. It's a film that you should definitely seek out. In at number five is a film called Utamaro and His Five Women from the year 1946, directed by Kenji Mizuguchi. And Mizuguchi is one of the most famed Japanese directors, hailed as one of the top three up there with Akira Kurosawa and Yasujiro Ozu. Mizuguchi is famed for his classics such as Ugetsu and Sancho the Bailiff, but I think that Utamaro and His Five Women is a little gem that people often overlook. The story follows Utamaro, a highly skilled and talented painter who wanders around pre-urbanised Tokyo searching for inspiration. His main source of inspiration is typically women. He has a fascination with women, and this film is oddly sexualised for a film that came out in the 40s. The film is set primarily in brothels, and you see a lot more flesh than you would think. It tackles themes of lust and love, and just the image of the naked body. Utamaro as a character is sarcastic, witty, and incredibly confident in his own skills. He is often critical of his contemporaries, saying that their depictions of women lack the flesh and blood that would really bring them to life. He says to these contemporaries that if you paint women like freaks, then they are just freaks, and if that's not good trash talk, then I don't know what is. The film opens as Utamaro greatly offends a fellow painter, as you would come to expect from the guy, and this painter then challenges him to a duel. But rather than dueling with swords, Utamaro offers to have a painting challenge, and he accepts, and Utamaro absolutely trashes the guy. He just shows him up, embarrasses him, but then, after Utamaro shows the beauty that he can paint, this fellow painter then becomes an admirer of Utamaro's. 
The film tackles a common theme that underlies all of the films in this list, and that is an underappreciation of the artist as a man. All of these artists are appreciated for their art, but very little are appreciated for who they are as a person. Lots of the women in this film go after Utamaro because they want to be painted by him. There's a famous bit where he paints a tattoo on the back of a woman because no other person can paint as well as him. And because of this, it leaves Utamaro feeling quite empty inside. In that scene I was talking about before where Utamaro greatly offends one of his fellow painters, a woman comes out of the background exclaiming, where is Utamaro? Where is Utamaro? As if she is fearful for his life. And then she is asked, are you in love with Utamaro? And to that she says, no, don't be silly, but he can't paint me if he's dead. And that is the message I was talking about before, the underappreciation of the artist as a man. In at number four is Mr. Turner by famed British director Mike Lee, starring Timothy Spall as the titular character of J.M.W. Turner. And I believe that this film is a misunderstood masterpiece. And I talked to people about this film before and they criticise it for being boring and a two hour and a half long film where nothing happens. And I just can't disagree more. I think it is excellent. This is a real tangible look at the life of Turner and it looks at the last 26 years of his life, which I find quite an interesting directing and writing choice because by this point, Turner is already established as a very good artist. Most of the historic literature on Turner portrays him as a curmudgeonly old man who just grunts at everyone and everything. But in Mr. Turner, the writing and the performance from Timothy Spall injects some incredible life and emotion into the character that I have not experienced reading up about him anywhere else. This film is stunning. I know it's a trite cliche to say that the setting in a film is a character in itself, but in this film it's more true than ever. The beautiful English countrysides and the seasides just make England look so good. I live in England and I've never ever seen it look so beautiful. It really is one of those films where you could pause it at almost any moment and it would look like a painting in of itself. It's a fascinating look into the life of Turner and his contemporaries as their art is being displayed at the Royal Academy. There's a particular scene on the famous varnishing day which is when all of the painters would go and touch up their work even though it's already framed and displayed and that's just their attempt to kind of one-up on their fellow painters. In that scene, Turner basically goes up to one of his paintings and he just puts a red blotch on it. And everyone's so like, what, you just ruined one of your really good paintings, why have you done this? And then he goes up to it, just kind of rubs it away and just smirks at them and it turns out it's a, it's a boy on the ocean. I knew a bit about the life of Turner, but I did not know much about the heartfelt bond he had with his father and his secret romance with his seaside lady. The film tackles all of this and the troubles of the man, and for me, this is the perfect biopic about Turner. And in at number three is Van Gogh by French director Maurice Pilar from the year 1991, the year I was born, and this is the film I was talking about in the intro. And if you're going to seek this film out, which I absolutely recommend, get this edition. This is the Eureka Masters of Cinema Blu-ray, which came out in the UK a few years ago, and it is packed with special features about the film, about the director, Maurice Pilar, and about Van Gogh. And this is one of the key cornerstones in my personal Blu-ray collection, so get this. What can I say about this film? It's a beautiful look at the conflicted life of a now iconic man and it's honestly a painful watch just to see how misunderstood he was in his life. Watching how it fueled his own sadness and insecurity is just heartbreaking, especially the relationship with his brother who is an art dealer and he ends up with about 200 of Vincent's paintings but he says that he can't sell them because no one would want them. He wishes that his brother was more like Renoir, a painter who was established in his own lifetime, and it's just sad to watch that unfold. I really admire this portrayal of Vincent van Gogh, 
And a lot of people don't seem to agree with me because they say that the actor Jacques Dutron looks nothing like Vincent van Gogh, which I think you should look past even if you don't agree with me, because this film is just a beautiful look at the life of the painter. I also love the portrayal of Dr. Cachet and his daughter Marguerite. He is a man who is definitely of the times, and this film portrays his serious side contrasted with his goofy side, and it's just brilliant to watch. In this film, we do see the ugly side of Vincent as well. We see his internal and mental struggles, as well as the way he treats women, and just his irresponsibility in general. But personally, I was willing to look past all of that. Not because of his art and how much we appreciate it, that's secondary, but because of his compassion towards other people and we see his capacity for love. And ultimately, I think we can all relate to him and his feeling of alienation. And if you can't, quite frankly, I don't think you're human. Van Gogh is definitely one of Pilar's misunderstood films. And it's another masterpiece about painters that I think everyone should go and see if you have some sort of interest in the man himself. And in at number two is Edvard Munch, directed by Peter Watkins. And again, if you like what I say about this film, definitely seek this out, because this edition was put out this year by Eureka on the Masters of Cinema label, and it's the best the film has ever looked. And this edition also comes with a booklet with tons of essays and information about Watkins and the making of this film. So definitely go and get this one. Watkins is known for his documentary style of storytelling and Edvard Munch is no different in that regard. I imagine a lot of people don't know Edvard Munch by name, but he painted the iconic masterpiece, The Scream. The film follows his life over three decades, chronicling his middle-class family's struggle with death and disease, and it also shows his association with the revolutionary anarchist and nihilist Hans Jaeger. We see Monk's style evolve over time as he tackles his own deep existential thought and the way in which he processes his own affair with a married woman. Now, Watkins used a lot of non-actors for this film. These are people with no acting experience whatsoever, and this gave such a naturalistic feel to what we see on the screen. I really do love the docudrama style of this film. The extreme close-ups of people as they look towards the camera, as if they're being interviewed, really emphasises the juxtaposition of the lower classes and the upper middle classes, and it really drives home the message behind this film, the message behind La Bohème. All of the dialogue in this film is actually in Norwegian, and it really gives it that authentic feel, even though Watkins himself is a British filmmaker. He actually does all of the narration for this himself, and it has that very BBC, matter-of-fact documentary style, and I love it for that. This is another film about a painter that you should definitely seek out. And in at number one is Andrei Rublev by Russian director Andrei Tarkovsky. And honestly, it couldn't have been anything other than this film. Not only is this the best film about a painter, but this is one of the best films of all time. And I believe it's a film that absolutely everyone should see at some point in their life. And not only that, this version, released this year in the UK by Artificial Eye, is probably the best the film has ever looked. It just looks impeccable on Blu-ray. Now this film, holy hell, I don't even know where to begin. It's a three hour look at the 15th century Russian painter, Andrei Rublev, as he travels across Russia and he meets all sorts of people in a time of war. And it's just a metaphysical, deeply philosophical and existential look at life. In a way, this film is a look at identity and how Andre, as a painter, struggles with the idea that his paintings are wanted by other people across Russia and the way in which what he experiences, the cruelty of war at first hand, brings into question his beliefs and his religion. The film is divided up into eight distinct chapters, each looking at a different outlook and viewpoint of the painter's life and what he experiences in his travels across Russia. And each of these chapters could be viewed on their own and they would be a standalone work of art. The cinematography in this film is incredible 
absolutely stunning. And it's one of those films that, again, you could pause at any point and it would be a painting in its own right. I honestly am having trouble talking about this film. I feel underqualified because anything I say about this film is not going to do it justice. All I can say is go and see this film because it is a masterpiece, one of the best films of all time. And I think that if you watch it all the way through, you will find something to connect to within its story. All right, there it is, my top five, maybe six if you count the honourable mention, films about painters. And it may have been what you were expecting or it may not have been because, like I said, there are so many films about painters and if you think something should have been on this list, please let me know in the comments below. I really hope you've enjoyed this video. I know it's something a bit different and I just want to thank you so much for all the support you've given me with these videos so far. At the time of recording, I'm almost at 200 subscribers, which absolutely blows me away because I never expected to reach that many people. So thank you for that. And if you liked this video, remember to subscribe below. I'll be back with more videos very soon, but until then, bye everyone.